I'm getting ready for the holidays. I cleaned everything out of the front foyer here, giving it a good vacuum. And then I'm going to bring some pumpkins inside to put by the fireplace. Then I'm going to head outside and clean the walkway. But I kind of did this backwards. I probably should have vacuumed after I brought the pumpkins in because I just brought dirt in with them, but that's just me. When I come back inside, I'll show you more of the Thanksgiving tree and a little of our dining room. But right now, I have to clean up all the mums that got killed during the snow. And I decided to do it today because you can even see a little dusting of snow in the cart. I didn't know it was in the forecast and I went outside to get those pumpkins and realized it was time to do this cleanup. Now I'm going to be trimming back these mums and I'm going to make sure that there's just enough left so that in the spring I can see where they are. Hopefully they'll come back. These were not perennial mums like I have had. Um, there are some of them actually are. I take that back. But the new ones we planted this year were not perennial mums. So if they come back, great. If not, I will know where to plant the new ones. One down, 15 more to go. I'm still trying to decide if I'm going to leave the leaf garland up for another few more days, and I'm trying to decide if I'm going to keep it and try to use it for one more year. I was so pleased at how easy these just cleaned up. They were so frail and fragile. They, I could have just like knocked them with my foot and they were breaking off, so it was, this went very fast. I'm glad this went fast because it is so cold. You can feel winter in the air and this is still the week before official Thanksgiving, but we are hosting our Thanksgiving day this coming weekend. So by the time you see this, it will already be our Thanksgiving. I found this cute little bird's nest amongst the mums. I'm pretty sure it came down in a large windstorm that we had last week. So this cart will be destined for the compost pile, but right now I have to go inside. My fingers are cold. It's only 34 degrees right now. I thought I'd show you a few things on our Thanksgiving tree. Now instead of doing one long piece of ribbon, I like to do shorter ones to make it look like it's going in and out of the tree. But I was trying to decide which direction what I was going to do and when I looked up at my oil painting of the ship I realized I knew what I was going to do. I'm just going to show you what inspired me. These pieces are shorter than normal but I actually liked the look of the billowing sails here so I made mine shorter and I'm just going to put a few on the tree. And let me just quickly show you what I'm doing here. I'm going to make it look like the ribbon is going through the tree. So I have one short piece above and then I'm making it look like it's going into the tree and coming back out of. And I did this all over as if it was twisted around the tree. Now I had picks with three apples on them. I had quite a few. I already took it apart here because I realized afterwards I would show you what I did. And I literally just pulled them apart and I'm going to place them in the tree temporarily because once this Thanksgiving is over for us I convert this tree to a Christmas tree so these apples will most likely come off and here I am bringing the pumpkins in that I had outside I thought it would be really nice to have the fire going and just kind of the harvest feel now on my Thanksgiving tree I usually would have a lot of items from outside like my viburnum and the dried hydrangeas there's a few dried hydrangeas there but the storm killed them and I was very limited so I focused on my orange slices. But this is a little overview of what we have. I put a cute little pheasant at the top here and like I said the tree has apples and acorns. Now the orange slices I still have to put the ribbons on them but for now I quickly did hooks. This is what I've done in past years but the Christmas trees will have ribbon oranges but the hooks work really well especially on garlands. And maybe you can see there in the center I have some of the hydrangeas. I have some tucked in there. And if you did not see my previous video, this is a garland I made for the mantle. You can see it in the background there. I made it with corn husks. So I'm going to link that below. But I'm going to give you a quick close-up of that if you did miss my video. If you did see the video, here it is again. 
I'm already trying to decide how I'm going to modify this for Christmas decoration. Maybe some red bows or cranberry colored bows will be added. Well, I was able to create a few stolen moments to take a few videos of some of the spaces here I've decorated for Thanksgiving before our guests arrive. And when I do my Thanksgiving tables, they're fairly casual. I don't do the large florals and I just like to have it very casual. I use things that I already have here in the home on the table. If you can see that there, I have the rosebud wreath that I made in a previous video. I will try to link that below as well. But it's very relaxing right now. I'm just, like I said, taking a little time to myself. I'm going to be heading back in the kitchen in the moment to start putting things in the oven. But right now, I'm actually enjoying walking around to show you this. In the room that is going to be our butler's pantry is another table setting that I have. And at the end of this video, I'm even going to show you a, a table setting that I did last year. Once again, using things that I already have. That uh, wreath was on my mantle previously when I was decorating for fall and the hurricane globes and candlesticks you might have seen in a thrift store find video. And here I actually have been hanging some of my herbs that I keep going into the garden. I figured this is going to be my pantry. Might as well start using it as such. So I had fun doing that the other day. And the kitchen. Trust me, this looked like a bomb went off a while ago. I was up until probably midnight last night um, cooking and baking. I actually you know, made my pecan pie and I wanted to get that done. So right now I have things set up, ready to go. I did some topiaries with the green balls that I purchased in September, just have them on some pots. And for the holidays, I think I'm gonna put those on some silver wine coolers that I have but I'm not sure yet if it will fit. My turkey's there, ready to put in the oven, put on high heat, and then I will turn the heat down just to start browning him. I have butter out softening to put onto the table later. I do need to take out gravy boats. What I like to do, for those who are just having their first Thanksgivings, um, you know, this is, this is not new information for some of us, but I like to put warm water in my gravy boats before putting gravy in. It does keep the gravy warmer. I have a few Thanksgiving and Christmas videos in queue, one being this cranberry sauce. I followed my aunt's recipe and it came out so good. Now what's on top is a candied orange. I am really working hard at figuring it out because I had a candied orange, which I'm showing here, at an inn and it was delicious. The whole orange, peel and all. I know I didn't cook my orange long enough, but it was edible and it gave a wonderful orange essence to the cranberry sauce. I'm determined to perfect this. If you haven't already seen my easy apple pie recipe, which is so delicious, and I do use a store-bought crust, I'm going to link the recipe below, but I thought I would just show you the steps here. If you want, you can fast forward a little bit, but this is how I make my apple pie. All I do is open up one of the crusts, put it into my pie plate, and then I pour in the apples that I had made previously with just brown sugar and some flour, cinnamon and nutmeg, and then I'm going to cover it with another layer of the pie crust, and then I adorn it with the leaves. This particular one, I think I only did four leaves, uh, but um, I did make a couple pies, and you're even going to see that I made two super mini apple pies because I just wanted to have enough for Ben and I to enjoy this night that I'm making it so that we don't go and cut into one of the larger pies. And one very important ingredient is butter sliced on the top, and I do like to use salted butter, and I just put that all over before I put on the top. What type of pies do you like to make or enjoy for Thanksgiving if you celebrate Thanksgiving? And if you don't celebrate Thanksgiving, what is your favorite pie? I'd love to know. Just adding a few steam holes before I put it in the oven. 
I did a few extra holes because when I put the leaves on top, sometimes the steam holes get covered. And then I do a light brushing of an egg wash, which is just an egg beaten with a little bit of water. And also this will help the sugar that I sprinkle on top it here, and also it will help the leaves that I put on top it here. If you yourself would like to put leaves on top, this pie then would take three pie crusts. So I usually have two boxes and then if I don't make another pie, I use the pie crust for other items. The final touch before baking, a little sprinkle of vanilla sugar. In one of my previous recipe videos, I showed how I made mini apple pies, but these are super mini apple pies. I just put a little crust at the bottom um, and then a scoop and a half of the apples. And like I said, it was just so we could have a little taste for dinner because the house smells so amazing. It's what a tease because we wouldn't have the pie right away. And here they are, a little treat for the evening. Now I'm gonna whip up an easy pecan pie recipe. Once again, I will have the link for the recipe below. But all this is, is adding in some sugar to some beaten eggs, some salt, some vanilla, and I'm gonna whisk that up real quick. And then I add a little melted butter and some corn syrup. Now I added the pecans, mix it together, I'm going to pour it into the pie crust, and then bake. Well, as I mentioned earlier, by the time you see this, our Thanksgiving day is over. It's actually the next morning from our Thanksgiving day, and I'm already pulling together all of the items to get them ready to go up in the attic, and then I will start, or actually I can't say start, I will continue to decorate for Christmas and I have more videos like I said coming your way. I can't wait to show you some other things I have going on here in our home. But for now here is a quick tablescape that I did last year for our Thanksgiving. As I mentioned at the beginning of this YouTube video, I like to use things I have on hand. So this is a garland that I had wrapped around a candle holder with cranberries floating in votives and I just added a few votives on top. The mini faux pears I have on the dish ended up having little name tags uh, leaning against them. And once again, it made for a very simple yet elegant Thanksgiving table. Well, kindred spirits, I hope you enjoyed this short video, how I got ready for our Thanksgiving. And I hope it helped inspire you with some ideas to help you find your own version of fine living, no matter how simple or grand that may be. If you're not already following me over on Instagram, I welcome you to do so. It's New England Fine Living, and there is a lot more on my website, newenglandfineliving.com. Bye now.